Okay, so today we have a KitchenAid two slice long slot toaster. It's a model number KMT4116ACS. And the complaint is that only the outside slots light up. The middle slot does not light up. Now most commonly when that happens, it's a result of the elements in the center being uh, broken, disconnected, and it's not a real repairable fault uh, for a number of issues. There's no way to really connect those two uh, pieces of nichrome wire together. Before we worry about taking anything else apart, we'll just take the screws out and uh, see what kind of issues we have with the uh, with the knobs. So. like the, the covers moving. Uh, oops. So this section came out, this came out all at once. Uh, it's good we didn't work to get the knobs off all together because it appears as if at least the lid is loose. Let's see if we what we can see. And I haven't been able to find any information about how to how to open this up on the internet. Um, but if we look around, the flashlight we might be able to find. Okay, so I'm not sure how I get to it, but if you look just inside, right in there, there's a screw head. And it looks like that screw head holds on. There we go. You can, you can almost see it without the light. Uh, it looks like the screw head holds on this lever here. So I need to figure out how to get to that. And so that screw did indeed hold that lever on. No idea how I'm going to get it hooked back up. But. Right, so there are, I can show you how to do this. tab there. I'm going to push back on here and watch it. There you go. See it pop up? There we go. So now we can get the wires to come up out of there. So I'm going to push this back 
out of the way so that this could pop up. Now I don't know how I'm going to get them back in there, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Alright, but the thing we haven't done yet is we haven't confirmed the issue. I don't recommend you do this at home, but we're going to energize the toaster without the, without the top on. And what we're looking for is what elements light up. Um, etc. So right. here we go. And red, red, and nothing in the center. Get it down one more time. And press the bagel setting to see if that makes a difference. Again, after pressing the bagel setting, the outside elements did not light up, which we wouldn't expect them to, and the inside elements also did not light up, which we would expect them to do. We'd expect them to come on, uh, to come on high. So, uh, it appears as though the bagel button's working, uh, but the center elements still aren't. Um, so I'm going to unplug this before I forget. Uh, let it cool off for a little while, and then I'll be back. So while I was gone, uh, I cleaned some of the crumbs off of the towel here because a bunch of stuff came out that would have come out. Uh, no fault of the owner. It's trapped inside the toaster. Um, so, and did a little bit of tracking and just seeing, you know, always follow the, follow the power. So, uh, AC comes in, uh, comes in through, uh, and is interpreted through this little block right here. It, it just gets changed from, From the wire it comes in on, it turns into brown and brown and white and kind of heat resistant wire. And then uh, both of those wires run up to either side of these of the switch. So both sides of the power uh, are switched. And of course, when the toaster is energized, it sends power to both sides. To, of the cord down the uh, down the pipe, but also the this mechanism is latched under under a relay right here until you know toast ready or whatever other set of conditions come up to let them pop up again, and then there's no electricity to the toasters. So, uh, the brown and white wires run right along here, and they terminate. They terminate in this circuit board, so they're soldered right to the neutral. Right to does the terminate at the board, <coughs> and then this other white wire does come out of the board, uh, but it comes out of the board and is is jumped to all the elements on the toaster. So it's not an independent control. It just it's just a I'll call it a H switch. One terminates at the top of the center row and H2 <clears throat> H2 appears to run the outside elements so ready and nothing so we have no Continuity. So that tells us that the nichrome wires are indeed detached. Uh, that's a that's a fatal condition <laughs> in most cases. We're going to see if we can identify where the nichrome wires are detached. Although once we start down that path, uh, the chances of return are, are, are very slim. Uh, the further we take this toaster apart, uh, the more we come in contact with the delicate mica and, and the 
nichrome wires and other stuff that's, that's much harder to get back together. So uh, I'm not going to make any promises about this being a successful repair at this point. Here we go. That's where the, um, the hot side enters, that's the hot lead and where it conducts or starts to contact the nichrome wire. I'm going to wiggle it there so you know that I'm talking about the same one. See it? Uh, so those are definitely connected. And then we're just going to trace that wire. And we're going to trace that wire uh, all the way around till it gets back to and returns to um, down at the bottom. All right, so we found the the culprit. There's a broken nichrome wire down in the inside of the toaster there. We found that by just tracing continuity along the nichrome until it stopped and then tracing back and found that. Um, Finding it's one thing, repairing it's another. Finding a connector that'll stand up to uh, 1,000, 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit uh, reliably without uh, you know, losing contact over you know, hundreds if not thousands of heat cool cycles uh, is, is another thing. Remembering that you know, things get hot, they expand and contract and the connection will just go bad. But um, we'll see if we can find something that might work. Okay, so with a piece of nichrome wire from another toaster, I made a little hook. And what I'm hoping to do is drop that little hook down on top of the two halves of the broken wire. And then be able to come in and crimp that hook with some tweezers. And then once the patches crimped, I'm going to cover it with some baking soda and water solution to act as a flux. And then when I turn it on, it will heat up. It should weld itself together. It should turn the flux into glass, which I should be able to break away. And we should have a uh, mechanical fastener as a result of the welding. How many times did I say should in that sentence? <laughs> Let's see how it works out. Wish I could have showed you how I did that, but <clears throat> man. That took a while. So what I have down there is a piece of wire that is piece of nichrome wire wrapped around the broken pieces of nichrome wire. Let's see if I can get in there a little closer. Yeah. Oh. So that's the patch. I'm going to do the best I can to smother that in this mixture.
uh, the part that is connected together is going to get hotter than the rest of it. And so as a result of that, we expect it to um, weld itself together. Let's see if that works. We're just going to turn this off and let her um, let it dry for a while. Let it cool off as well. Uh, because it seemed like there was electricity fl flowing through that part of the part of the elements where there wasn't before. So we'll see how we did. Got him, <laughs> boy, putting that uh, baking soda on there neatly it was a lot harder than it looked. And I might have should have taken five or six different runs at it, but uh, I was out of out of juice. So uh, we'll see. If it worked. While I'm letting this cool down, uh, some of you may have been wondering what I was using uh, down in the bowels of the toaster there to get at it and what kind of handy tool this was. Uh, a friend of mine, Brian from Fix It Clinics, turned me on to this. Uh, it's called a uh, alligator hemostat and you can see why because it uh, it looks like an alligator uh, but when you need to reach into some place really long <laughs> and skinny like pulling the string back through a pair of sweatpants or digging down inside a toaster something like this comes in handy so pro tip of the day Alligator hemostat. Get one. <laughs> I'm going to let this dry quite a bit uh, before I plug it back in, but I just wanted you to see what it looks like when I get most of the um, flux compound out of there. Um, it's, I mean, when I hit this, That's pretty solid. I mean, so I, I would say I'm pleased as punch with that. Um, well, just to give you an idea, this, this is not, <laughs> it's a little tiny. <laughs> it's way down in there. Uh, but we'll, we'll take a look at it when it heats up and see what it looks like. Again, we'll be back in a little bit. Well, it's been drying for quite a while now. Let's see if uh, the middle glows after the repair. And the answer is, it sure did. Uh, hmm. Still uh, probably the worst connection in there. Uh, wonder if I should let it uh, heat up with some more flux, weld itself better, so that it doesn't heat up so much. Hmm. Or maybe that's what it looks like when it heats up. Let's... Uh, Let's let it go and see what happens. weld that again just for the heck of it so I'll be back after I redo the whole uh, the whole nine yards with the um, 
baking soda. See you later. So that little spot is overheating, which means that the other, uh, the rest of the coil is probably underheating a little bit. So you might end up with a dark spot on the bread, uh, and it might end up a little lighter in the center than you'd want it to be. No idea what it's going to look like when I put it on bagel. Probably run it through a cycle just to make sure that it doesn't just burn itself out before I give it back. And then I think that's probably the best we're going to be able to do for a. Uh, a nichrome center <laughs> center element repair uh, on a toaster today. So uh, we'll we'll put it back in, run through a couple more tests here, but uh, I think we're done working on it. I'm going to clean out the rest of that uh, baking soda, and then we'll uh, we'll call it done. Good day. Let's see if we can get this back together. So. Um, That's a scary thing. It feels like they're going to break off in your hand. Uh, not something I would like to do every day. Okay. Goes in the handle. And we'll put that back. Get this thing back in, taking a screwdriver at an angle to the screw. Then I put the, it's a magnetic tip, so I pull the screw up, I put the lever back in, and then put the lever all the way in and the screwdriver at an angle and the lever at the bottom of travel. I'm not, I'm able to screw this thing back in tightly, so. There we go. So, the magic of getting the lever on and off that without uh, without breaking it. All right. I'd give it a wipe and make some toast. Okay, so uh, got this KitchenAid toaster here. The the center was uh, center was dead. Uh, looks like we've welded back the uh, nichrome elements or welded them to themselves. And we're going to find out here by making some toast. The, what I think is going to happen is. I think there's going to be the center section might be a, a little weaker than the outside because some of the energy is is being lost in this patch. There's a patch right up here um, on the in you know, on this side, so we should expect to see a little bit of a dark, uh, a little bit of a dark spot on the bread. But we're going to find out because I'm going. To, this is the first batch of bread.
You can see the patch lit up. Down there, and it's burning hot. Not sure how long that'll hold up. But that tells us the whole element is heating up. Remember, this is the first time I've run it, so it's possible that that's cooking the bread. Let's, uh, it's smoking a little bit. Let's take a look. That doesn't look bad. So it's possible that the nichrome wire that I used, since it was from a two-slice toaster, um, may have been thinner, and so it would be kind of the path of least resistance for uh, the toaster heating up. Or maybe it just blew out, which it looks like it might have done. And I'm seeing red glow on the outside, but no glow on the inside. So it looks like we lost the patch from it overheating. And so got no toast, toast, no toast, toast, and to be the same on the uh, on the raisin bread. Actually it's done a little more than I would have expected, but that's because I put it down twice. So looks like the patch worked. But we're going to have to go back to the drawing board with the material. Probably a thicker nichrome wire uh, would be less, and less likely to, to blow itself up and self-destruct first cycle. So, um, I think I'm going to return this to the owner or recycle it or kind of report it as dead. I'm going to continue to look for some nichrome wire in the wild that might be thicker because um, I think the technique while it was a pain to execute, has promised for being able to recover uh, when the nichrome wire has got a split in it, so being able to recover toasters. So, having said that, that's all for tonight, today. Have a great day.